Welcome in. It is day 36, and you're speaking with the Meeples champion. So today we're going to be going over a larger game than most of the games we've discussed so far. This is a pretty exciting game. It's a, it's a you know, bit of a, a dystopian type setup. And I've only gotten to play the game once, but I've really enjoyed it. I want to get in a second play, and I think this is one that's good to talk about early on from the initial idea of what I saw before possibly reviewing this again in maybe a year when I've gotten extra plays and I can give a completely new perspective. Today, we're going to be discussing Euphoria. Now, Euphoria is a two to six player game. It says 60 minutes. Uh, it's, it's maybe, if you're like experienced, I think it's more of a two hour game. And it's fun. It's a lot of worker placement. It's a lot of having to deal with checks and balances, making sure that you're not going too far on one thing or else it's going to affect you elsewhere. You're, you're dealing with resources. You're dealing with trying to build up knowledge. You're dealing with trying to, you know, even out who gets what where because everybody's going for the same things. And if somebody snags it, that means now it's not available for me. It's an interesting type of a buildup, yet almost a take that type game because even though you may not physically attack somebody in the game, you taking something can drastically affect them. So let's jump into it. What is going to be our different types of perspectives today? You know how that goes. Step one, we're jumping right into the art. The art is nice. I think it's a good box. I don't think there's any issue with it. I think you look through the cards and I mean, whoever did it, it's a, they're a good artist. Does the art sell the game for me? I don't know. I don't know that it does. I think I like this box art a lot, but when I'm looking through the cards and when I'm looking through the board, it's good, but it doesn't necessarily grab me. I think if you're into this particular style of art, like every art that there is, yes, of course, but you're not talking about, I like a particular type of art, so will I buy a game with that art? That's obvious. What you're trying to get is all the people who aren't into that art who that's not their, you know, inherent first choice. Does it sell the game for them? Does it sell them the theme? Does it sell them the experience? I think this does ex sell the theme, but I'm not sure that it sells me just on, on, on it being a truly grasping art. And this happens with a lot of games where there's not a complaint of the art. It's just when you have to really think about it from that perspective of, are you grabbing eyes? Are you pulling me in? Now, I try to do my best on these reviews to give a, a good perspective, and it's not always just about selling the game. It is about the experience of playing. So, well, I don't think I'm going to give them a thumbs up on the art today. I will acknowledge that once you've played the game, the art is fine. It does help the theme. I just think that they, they haven't done enough for me. I can't just give a thumbs up to every single art. I have to be stingy at times, and this one... Something about it just doesn't get me for the art. I'm not sure what it is, but I just don't think I can give the thumbs up. Components. The components are fantastic in this game. It's primarily wood. You have a lot of components. Every player is going to have uh, a little head token that's for their knowledge. They're going to have 10 stars, which is kind of what they're trying to build up for their, their experience. Uh, I believe those are how you actually end up getting your VP to win. Um, you're going to have a bunch of different resources all in wood that are all over the board. So, so that's really cool. Uh, you have a heart token that represents your health. So there's a lot of wood. Then there's a lot of cards. And just as usual, the cards are fine. There, there's no complaint. I have nothing crazy good to say about them, but nothing bad. And beyond that, it's, it's just the board and really these pieces. And I think that they do a really good job. There are, there are dice, of course custom dice, which are really nicely designed. So I'm going to give the components a thumbs up. I think they did a great job on it, and the components make this game. There is a lot of components. It's it's a big game because of those components. But it's a, it, I like it. I think that the components really pulled me in on that play. The price. I went on Amazon, and this was going through about $56. That seems acceptable especially since we're talking about Amazon right now. So that's going to include, you know, you have a lot of options out there 
and I feel like, you know, once you jump to Amazon and you look at things like this, now you can get the free shipping. You can occasionally have to pay for shipping on top, but I think that 56 is fine for this game. If you're looking for a nice, you know, you're dealing with worker placement primarily and resource management. That's really your two giant pieces here. Obviously, VP is a big deal as well, but that's that's what they're causing. It's not what you're doing. I, I think that for this style of a game, which is going to be really about facing off with everybody else at the table, I think there's going to be a lot of play out. Know, the reason I say it's more than 60 minutes, it's not that the game necessarily needs to take that long, but because of the way this works as a thinker, analysis paralysis is going to happen a lot, even to players who don't usually have it happen to them. I am not one that suffers from analysis paralysis during a game. I usually have my turn figured out. I have a backup option. You play this game at six player, it doesn't matter if you have a backup option. It's going to get to you. You're going to go, shoot, I just had three things happen I didn't want to see happen, and now I don't know what to do. You have to... You're going to have to play this enough to get to that point where you can go on the fly. And I don't think that's going to be in a few plays. But I could be surprised. So uh, I will give this when it comes to its price for the for the size game it is. I think 56 is fine. And you're going to be able to find this in more than just on Amazon. It, you'll never see this in a Target. I don't believe you'll see it in a Barnes & Noble. But you'll find it in the occasional board game store. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it at a, like two, maybe three out of five stores. I think it it's popular enough, or at least well-known enough, to get a game on a shelf. Maybe not a huge bulk of them, but it'll be in a store. So thumbs up on the price. The difficulty. It is difficult. This is not entry-level game. I would not suggest this for kids. I would not suggest this for, for beginner gamers. Even mediocre gamers, this might be a bit of a task for them. I think that this is a game that if you're an experienced gamer, yes. Otherwise, Underneath that, it's going to be that you have to be really into those particular mechanics and have played games like this already before. That's my recommendation. I have to give it a thumbs down on the difficulty because I think it's a little bit tough to get this to the table for the majority of gamers. Replayability, thumbs down again. I didn't want to play it right away afterwards. It was exhausting on that first play, and it's been now months and we haven't played it again. Now, I don't mean that as a down to the game in general, I think that the game is fun and I want to play it again, but you play it and it's exhausting and you don't want to do that back-to-back -back games. This is not one I think you're going to see a big game group pull to the table twice in a day, even if they have a whole Saturday. I think this is one that you play and you go, that was fun, another time. And then how close together? I mean, if this was in smaller game groups, that'd be different. But because this is one I think is only getting into the table of really the more experienced players... That means bigger collections, and that means this one's unlikely to get to the table very often. If you get to this to the table once a year, that would be impressive to me. I could see this being in a collection and getting forgotten about for two or three years because you just, hey, we have the 10 games we love, and then we have the 20 games that are new, and then we have a bunch of other games that we're always trying to get to the table, and once in a while we snag one, and this one just falls to the back. So it's got to be a, a thumbs down on replayability. The routes to victory, you know, the, those keys to victory... How are you able to win? There are a lot because there is, I believe, seven different resources that you're kind of managing through this and you're trying to control different parts of the board and increase your, your stability within them and move along as far as showing control. I think there is a lot of different ways to do it. As the game progresses, depending on your early game, yes, it can get tight at the end and all of a sudden you find, I only have one or two real options. But that early game, that first half, two-thirds, maybe even three-quarters of the game, you have a lot of options. So you're not forced to have to do the same thing. And once you've gotten to that, okay, we're, we're near that last little bit. Yes, it tightens, it constricts, and now you have very specifically something you have to do. But every game will be a little different because your early stuff affects your late stuff. So I'll give it a thumbs up on, the, on those keys to victory, those routes to victory. Finally, is it unique? I think it is a unique set of, you know, if you take everything about the game, sure. But I don't know. I just can't consider this unique. I like the box art. I like the dystopian future type setup. But I've seen this in other places. You know, I have Whistle Mountain, and it's the same style design in a lot of ways for how things work. It's a different board setup, and you definitely use your meeples differently. 
but the idea of how those things work is roughly the same. I don't think that this game is unique enough to me. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think it's playable. I definitely think it's playable. But in my personal opinion, this is not a game that most gamers should own. I think you can get it to the table, and I think that it's a reasonable price for what it does, but I think that you're going to find 9 out of 10 gamers either don't want to play it or don't want to play it again, and I think you're going to find that even those who like it don't have a way to get it to the table very often, and that they can find other games that are an easier version to play this of. It's nothing wrong with the game. I like the game, and a friend of mine let me borrow his to do this review today. I'm not going to buy this game. It's unlikely, and it's not because I dislike it, it's because he has it. So if we want to play, I can ask him for his, because I'm not going to get other friends, and I'm not going to get family to try this game, and I'm not going to ask them to. I don't think this game will fit for all of them. I think that our small group will occasionally appreciate it, and that's all we need it for. So, this has been day 36, and we've been talking about Euphoria. You are speaking with the Meeples champion. If you guys could share, like, subscribe, and if you check down the description below, if you were interested in this game, I'm going to link to you the Amazon link. It's going to be a huge help to the channel because whenever somebody buys through that link, it'll end up contributing a little bit of money towards the channel, which we can use to improve everything about this. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you tomorrow.